Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Something that I am consistently asked about is, Zach, what are the best controller settings right now? What are the settings that the pros are going to be using? What's going to make my gameplay as smooth as possible? What's going to make it as easy as possible to do well? And with ranks now dropping and everything, I wanted to sort of revisit the best controller settings here because some things have been updated or changed since we last covered this. So, Dropping into our actual settings menu here, of course, your input device is going to be controller on a controller settings video, believe it or not. Keyboard and mouse, there are some very, very skilled keyboard and mouse players out there, but ultimately, as we know, controller is so dominant in COD, especially with how aim assist functions this year in particular. It's very busted and can be abused in a lot of ways, so controller is going to be that dominant input, especially for those top tier ranks. And if you're playing at a competitive level, either in the actual ranked play playlist or you're just trying to dominate in pubs as well. So initially here, button layout. Personally, I play on tactical. I have for years and years and years because I've always used scuff controllers and whatnot so this is always going to help out a ton uh, especially if you're trying to maneuver quicker because you can just use your right thumbstick to dive or to slide well neither of those options are as aggressive as they've been in the past using those to maneuver and make it tougher to uh you know have enemies land shots on you is going to be a big deal so tactical and making it a bit easier to maneuver that way is solid i don't flip anything uh so i just play with the standard stuff i also though have digital tap triggers and bumpers on my controllers so it's like clicking a mouse there uh that said you could always just customize your controller to your liking and change the exact input if you wanted to, which is a much needed feature that we've wanted to see in COD for some time and it's finally here now. So you could certainly utilize this if you wanted to and make things really, really convenient for your own uh, you know, level of comfortability with your controller. Then getting into more of the general things there, I don't use the bumper ping, but that's more of a preference thing. I also don't change my stick layout either. Vibration, I would always recommend turning off. Some people just take the rumble packs out of their controllers. I know a lot of these sites like, uh, you know, Scuff and Battle Beaver and whatnot allow you to actually just take those out entirely. I'd recommend doing that and just having the lighter controller. But if you do have the rumble packs in, Turning off that vibration so that you don't have anything potentially shaking your hands when you're trying to aim and be super precise is going to be the way to go. So I would not recommend having that on. Also, trigger effects, if you have an applicable controller, I'd turn those off as well. It's not going to help with a competitive gameplay experience. Obviously, sensitivity is a huge thing in this somewhat is preference based but there are some stats here that uh you know say this is better than that right uh, i would never recommend being too low around like three or four or too high which is really above like 14 or 15 or so i play on a 9 8 and i do like to stagger my horizontal and my vertical vertical you don't need as much because it's going to be uh easier to control vertical whereas horizontal you're always going to be looking around left and right trying to snap i like being a bit faster there but somewhere in the middle ground you're going to find most pro players playing anywhere from like a five to a 10, I'd say is about the max point there. Uh, it just is your level of comfortability once more. If you're on the higher end or maybe on the lower end there, you can certainly mess around and figure out what works the best for you. Sensitivity multipliers and vertical aim access. I don't mess with any of that. That's not gonna make a huge difference. Again, on uh, you know competitive play, if you really are in vehicles a ton and you want a faster sense or a lower sense, you could certainly adjust that, but that's not gonna be like a make or break setting. ADS behavior, obviously, we're going to have on hold, then uh, change the input. I like to just have as my left thumbstick, but that's more preference based there. Automatic sprint, I'm still running ATS. I know some players prefer just to have straight up automatic sprint. That way, uh, you know, if you're trying to move very precisely in certain areas, you're not getting that full on tack sprint and hurting your sprint to fire there a little bit extra. That more is a thing of how often do you play in those situations for me ats is going to save my thumbstick for one but also just make my gameplay transitions a bit smoother and i've learned to live with that even with a slower sprint to fire of tax sprinting equipment behavior is always going to be on hold my uh mount activation here is preference i like the standard ads and melee but you might like something else prioritize interact of course is going to be clutch for warzone it's going to make looting things way way easier that said you're still going to be picking up things accidentally because of how the loot disperses in this game right but still being able to one tap to open a door to open a chest to pick something up rather than holding is going to make everything way more seamless you always want to be running that then armor plate apply all this is going to make it easier you just have to press that armor up button once and then you can always cancel it if you want to uh by you know sprinting out of it or why whying out of it it's way easier than having to consistently press armor okay one plate in armor again one plate 
in just a little bit more seamless yet again anytime you can increase how seamless something is in game it's going to make things more fluid and more smooth and that's the ultimate end goal the smoothest your gameplay can be is going to be in most cases the best gameplay experience now as we jump into the advanced settings here quick reminder if you guys are new here every single day i'm your one-stop shop for all things going on in cod when it comes to news updates loadouts tips you name it it's all right here so feel free to hit that sub button turn on those post notifications and join us ultimately on the road to a million subs and if you guys enjoy this video if you find it helpful at all let me know by dropping a like on it would be seriously appreciated now for advanced settings here this is where things might get a bit controversial because it's a lot of aim assist focus right obviously you want target aim assist on aim assist types really go between black ops and default uh most players are going to be on one of those two there's not really going to be a huge difference in the two but i've played on black ops since day one and this is what i've become familiar with and accustomed to so no need to change that if you've been on default this whole time i probably wouldn't recommend changing that you could try it out you know like against bots and see how things play but there's not going to be a huge difference uh it's very uh, minor in terms of what is being affected here precision and focusing feel very unnatural though so i wouldn't recommend either of those ads aim assist this doesn't actually matter for multiplayer it's single player only as it says and the third person ads correction type is uh pretty standard there you just want to have that on assist now aim response curve type dynamic is what you're going to see the majority of pro players using there it's going to just make things feel a bit snappier uh linear though is also a really good choice just because it's one to one and it's always going to feel consistent with what you're looking at on screen and how much you're moving your thumbstick on your actual controller so either of those are going to be good choices there sense multiplier focus i keep on 100 the uh, transition timing though i keep on instant that way uh the second i go to ads i'm going to have all my custom tuning here and this is an important one because i do play on 98 sensitivity which is a little bit on that higher end when i ads i don't want to have 98 in some cases it's going to be a little bit too fast so instead for low zoom optics like your uh you know blue dots and red dots and whatnot i like to have it a little bit lower and then as the zooms increase i go a little bit higher because uh obviously over long range if you're trying to track a super small target you don't want to be moving too slow and not be able to keep up with them here so this is going to help out with accuracy with all these different zooms like i said i just go up a little bit in the increments as we get further and further out so two to three times four to five six to seven eight to nine and high zoom i'm just slightly going up with each one of those now i get asked about this all the time dead zones what is the best dead zone there is no best dead zone this is entirely specific to your controller and how much stick drift you have my stick drift will always be different than your stick drift so i've adjusted this to what i need that said what you do want to turn off here is basically the trigger dead zones for left and right trigger turn that all the way down to zero so that way you're gonna be shooting as fast as you can the second that you're uh you know pulling down and getting that activation point it'll go you don't have to worry about any you know barrier there with that so certainly i uh, have that on there controller orientation you probably want to have on up unless you don't want to have it on up but i think most players will probably go standard there uh now gyro aiming is something very niche that very few players are going to be able to actually use in a competitive scenario it's certainly something you can mess around with but it's not a realistic competitive option it's much more of a niche gameplay style it's cool for what it's worth though for sure but nothing there is really uh relevant to what we got going on in this video in specific movement behaviors here automatic move you don't want to have that on sprint behavior double tap uh, if you don't have uh, automatic tack sprint on that'll obviously be important for that grounded mantle I cannot stand randomly mantling things if I'm not trying to if I want to jump shot in that location so I turn this off and it is a game changer that said you're still going to mantle and ledge hang on things you don't want to that's just the default mechanics of the game not being optimal right i go for that partial airborne mantle and then automatic ground mantle i have off that'll just make things the smoothest uh based on what i've played so far and uh you know over time that's what i've become accustomed to now invert slide and dive behavior if you're someone who wants to dive consistently you want to have this on inverted because that's just a tap to dive i find dolphin diving to be a little bit more aggressive in most cases than sliding it makes you a little bit harder to hit in some cases as well so i'd much prefer to simply quick dive than quick slide if that makes any sense plunging underwater i keep on standard movement parachute auto deploy you obviously want to have off so you can get super low to the ground and then pull your chute and basically get down faster than your opponents would sprinting door bash you want to have that on just so you can get through those doors quicker mantle only on the ledge hang here because the movement based is really finicky and not consistent to uh if based off what i've played with that ads stick swap i have off backpack alternate control that's more of a preference thing and mainly for dmz 
weapon mount exit movement on short i don't actually think there's much of a difference there quite frankly i don't like my weapons to switch when i run out of ammo but if you do like that automatically to switch you could turn this on that's more preference based quick c4 detonation again not really a huge deal here also kind of strange that that's even in the controller settings honestly then vehicle behavior short delay on this and free look are going to be your standard ones there and then the mini map stuff and whatnot this is not really all that relevant to competitive gameplay at all a lot of this stuff is just preference based on how you want certain things to feel with the competitive stuff being more towards the top here but that being said those are the main pro settings that you want to be using for your controller here in warzone 2 whether you're trying to dominate pubs or rank up through the skill divisions in ranked play and that's going to wrap things up if you guys enjoyed the video if you found it helpful let me know by dropping a like on it if you're new here feel free to hit that subscribe button turn on those post notifications to always stay up to date with all things going on between mw2 warzone 2 and dmz but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day i'll catch you guys later peace out